gas chambers at Auschwitz. Nearly 140,000 Jews from all over Central Europe passed through here, including many of Europe's most prominent artists, who left a record of what it was like. Much of the art has survived, some of it by children. They portrayed how cold and crowded they were, sleeping 30 to a room. Typhus epidemics swept through the camp. The dead were brought to catacombs before being incinerated. Bodies were carried on the same wagons used for bread. Jews weren't gassed here, but more than 30,000 died of disease and hunger. <coughs> Music flourished in the camp. It was like a Juilliard for Jews. There were classes and concerts in cellars and attics. The hottest ticket in town was a children's opera called Wunderbar, which was written by a Czech. How did the Nazis manage to kill six million Jews and keep so much of the world in the dark? Part of the answer is in our story tonight. It concerns a concentration camp called Theresienstadt. It was in Czechoslovakia, and near the end of the war, the Nazis used it to calm the world. Reports had begun circulating in Allied capitals that the Nazis were exterminating Jews. The Nazis wanted to refute those reports, so they took this one camp, Theresienstadt, and turned it, if ever so briefly, into a model town. They shot a movie there to prove how good they were to the Jews, and they invited the Red Cross to inspect it. Central to the deception was the performance of a children's opera called Grundebar. The opera survived the war, and so did a few members of its cast. We're in the mid-70s now, and a few months ago, they invited us to spend some time with them. Every summer, a remarkable reunion takes place in these lush mountains in the Czech Republic. A group of friends come together from all over the world. They have one thing in common. They all grew up in the shadow of death, in a concentration camp outside of Prague. They grew up quickly. Helga Kinski couldn't speak about the horror for a full 40 years. Because actually, whatever you did, you didn't have the right to live. You were, you were sentenced to death. And that is something you can't get over. Their friendship began here in Theresienstadt, the transit camp. From here, a garrison town before the war, Jews were sent off to the gas chambers at Auschwitz. Nearly 140,000 Jews from all over Central Europe passed through here, including many of Europe's most prominent artists, who left a record of what it was like. Much of the art has survived, some of it by children. They portrayed how cold and crowded they were, sleeping 30 to a room. Typhus epidemics swept through the camp. The dead were brought to catacombs before being incinerated. Bodies were carried on the same wagons used for bread. Jews weren't gassed here, but more than 30,000 died of disease and hunger. Music flourished in the camp. It was like a Juilliard for Jews. There were classes and concerts in cellars and attics. The hottest ticket in town was a children's opera called Wunderbar, which was written by a Czech Jew and smuggled into the camp. It wasn't easy to get tickets. Dina Krauss was in the choir in Wunderbar. Tickets were printed for Wunderbar? Tickets were printed for every performance. And Wunderbar was a difficult ticket to get? The yeah, most, I think. Maybe the most difficult. It was performed 55 times by children in Theresienstadt. It's a fairy tale of sorts, the story of a young brother and sister who, with the help of a cat, a dog, a bird, and the children of the village, defeat an evil organ grinder named Blindabal. The opera ends with a victory song. Back in the camp, Nazis filmed this performance in 1944. The lead role, the part of Grindelbar, was played by a boy named Hansa Treitlinger. He's the kid with the mustache. Everybody loved him, and everybody adored him. Back then, Ella Weisberger played the cat. I wore my sister's ski pants and my mother's sweater, black sweater. This was my costume. Wearing a costume was a relief from what Ella and the other kids had to wear all the time in the camp. This was their only time. 
that they said we don't have to put on the jewelry star. A little couple minutes of freedom. A couple of minutes of freedom for Ella the cat. I, all I can hear and see is Ella never stopping to sing the, the cat. So we all sang the cat in the end. Eva Gross was 20 at the time. She taught the children. Uh, this was very nice, very liberating. Very, and of course the whole, not only the whole room, the whole house, the whole town sang the victory song afterwards. The whole town. The story of an evil man with a mustache. With a mustache? Did the kids have any? But the opera was really about? Exactly the, the symbolic meaning, I'm sure they did. The whole thing was, of course, the symbolic, you know, bring you back as Hitler. Yes. That was a show. I knew it was a show. 
the deception worked. The final report of the Red Cross delegation read that Theresienstadt looks like a normal provincial town where, and this is a quote, the elegantly dressed women all had silk stockings, scarves, and stylish handbags. The delegates also wrote that Theresienstadt is a final destination camp, and that people who come here are not sent elsewhere. In fact, by the time of the visit, some 68,000 people had already been shipped from here to the death camps. And they convinced the world, didn't they? Yes, uh, but they only convinced the world because the world wanted to be convinced. It's easier. When the show was over, the transports to Auschwitz were accelerated. Those who stayed behind, like Ella Weisberger, watched as their friends and fellow cast members were herded onto the trains. I tell you the truth. When we were saying their last goodbye, to some of I can't say it today. I said, I will see you later. I don't want to say goodbye. As the trains kept on heading to Auschwitz, the cast of Wunderbar kept on changing. Ella's co-star, Hansa Treitlinger, that young boy who played Glindebar, was sent to the gas chambers in 1944. The opera's composer, Hans Krasse, was killed about the same time. For those who stayed here in Theresienstadt, it meant learning new parts all the time, but that wasn't a problem because everyone knew the opera by heart. But by the end of 44, performance had stopped abruptly because there was hardly anyone left. Dieter Krauss was 14 when she was bundled onto a train to Auschwitz. For me, the work was started after Terezin. Terezin was still acceptable compared to what was after. The day we left Terezin, the world changed total, radically. Like very few other cast members of Linda Barr, Dieter survived Auschwitz and Bergen Belsen. But she lost most of her family and many of her friends. So few of them survived. And they were so talented. There were so many wonderful children among them, and promising children. Children that would have become poets and artists, and so many of them, they are all gone for nothing. The cast members of Brindabar who did survive got together this autumn. They walked around to Resenstadt, that old concentration camp, which is now a provincial town again. And Brindabar, children from all over the world perform this opera these days, this fairy tale set to music. Tonight, children from a nearby Czech school put on a performance for members of the original cast. Resenstadt Attic, where they first performed it more than 60 years ago. The girls, as they still call themselves, remembered their lives. The school children invited them to join in the finale, the victory song. They stole the show. <laughs> 